now. So instead of having this fixed intervals, the revision will penalize those two less to be revised with each other than, than those two. Yeah, so, so it's yeah that, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So, so it, uh, it's like a continuous way to realize the interval, the log interval idea. Except that we lose the conceptual distinction between, between both. But it also has the benefit that uh, that that we don't suffer from things like like when we are at the border of two different intervals, we can still be reversed so that we be very similar uh, with this treatment. So it also has benefits. Uh, another benefit would be that. Uh, that the exact timing is not lost. Yeah. But usually this, this one is not so important because in many applications the exact timing does not matter too much. Yeah, it depends on your application. Again, for example, if we are talking about this general diagnostic thing, if we are talking about pure conceptual like medical diagnostic, uh, we, we still have a temporal issue there. For example, if a, a patient takes a medicine, how long will the doctor is packed? Uh, effect. Okay. Maybe a few seconds, maybe you know, you say, I'm taking this medicine, I still have the problem. Uh, the doctor may say you you haven't waited long enough. Okay, it it doesn't work that fast. Uh, so we, we do have that, but not very serious. But as soon as we move into uh, robotics, this will immediately become easy. That is when you you know you move how long you anticipate especially you have a coordination of several body parts so timing is is everything so so that will be a very good testing field for for this model for, for the and let's see if we can do better than the other approach because um, on conceptual level, uh, the time interval might not be the only the only way to to conceptualize the time difference. Because mm -hmm. often, yeah, of course. Often other events that happen in between can be taken as uh, yeah. as additional context that would also indicate. Yeah, you can translate it in, into explicit conceptual description. Say after A, wait for five minutes. You have B, and then that five minutes itself become a concept, uh, which will directly represent uh, here, and that's a more accurate representation than after a while. This this plus five is kind of like your internal feeling about what a while means to you. We uh, do need that, but uh, yeah, it, it cannot solve all the issues. How much time do we have left? <laughs> you can <laughs> use your time if you feel it. <laughs> yeah, 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Oh, okay. Um, so this is one thing that happens. Um, another thing um, is about the anticipation. Because um, there's a difference between there's a difference between being able, uh, between not seeing something and it didn't happen. Um, so it would be bad if for all events the system did not observe, but it predicted them, like, like I predict that tomorrow there will be people walking in New York. <laughs> it's, it's not, even though I won't observe it, I won't go to the conclusion it didn't happen. It's so so whether we can form an anticipation should somehow depend on whether the event we predicted is something we can observe or not observe. And um, this is something which might be which we might need to improve in the future, but what we are currently doing is just whenever there is an input event it marks the corresponding concept to the observer. So when next time this event is predicted again, it can form the anticipation, assuming that it can still be yeah. observed. 
It's kind of like saying, since I have observed this in the past, I'm going to assume if it happened again, I should be able to observe it. Uh, mm -hmm. If I didn't, it means it may probably didn't happen. Sure. If this is thing you never happen, and you never directly observe, but only derive, then you're not going to expect that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And so currently we're doing it in a simple way. A input event marks the corresponding concept as observable, and whenever something is protected, it corresponds to an observable concept, then it will and by the way, this topic actually in the future can, can lead to a very nice paper if anyone wants to do it. This is directly related to AI's concept, the so-called closed world assumption. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, yeah, there are a lot of uh, discussion about that, but never from this point of view. Uh, so the, basically, uh, you just say if, if something is not marked as true in my knowledge base, I'm going to assume it's false. Is that a valid assumption? Well, in some situation, yes. In some situation, clearly not. Uh, it happened in the AI a lot. Well, for example, prolog is completely based on closed world assumption. Uh, mm -hmm. The technical reason is traditional logic, there are only two truth values, either true or false. There is no such a thing as I don't know. So they have to, you know, somehow interpret, I don't know, as, as false, uh, because you're supposed to know the truth. So if you cannot prove it to be true, it is false. But in our case, we can, we can, we can represent, I don't know. So then, then it becomes easier. In what situation, uh, we can still treat, I don't know, as false. Mm -hmm. In some situation, yes, it's valid, but not always. So that's, that's this theoretical discussion, which is interesting. I don't think we have already have the final answer, but I, I believe we are moving in the right direction on, on that topic. Mm -hmm. I guess it's still important, but we also allow anticipation to be uh, yes. operated. Yes, that's a that's very important part of this picture. Mm -hmm. So false means failed anticipation okay, mm -hmm. in this context. And there is something you never form an anticipation in the first place, so you don't get uh, negative evidence in that way. Because if, if it's only if 